Andy Weber has always loved vinyl records. It allows you to slow down. It allows you to sit back and listen to a side for 30 minutes, and then sit back with your record jacket just like it's a fine book to read. I'm Andy, glad to be here with you this morning. Gonna be here for about another hour. And as a Chicago DJ, Andy's heard a lot of frustration in the local music scene when it comes to releasing on vinyl. Yeah, friends and bands um, would, would say they weren't gonna do vinyl because of cost and because of six month wait times. So Andy and some friends started their own record plant, the first in Chicago in about 30 years. It's called Smashed Plastic. Andy's partner, John Lombardo, also owns a small label. He says it amazes him that vinyl works at all. The whole process is, is kind of magical. We always talk about it, the fact that you can actually cut a, a groove right into a piece of plastic, and then you can have a, a turntable and an amplifier do the opposite process, where it's basically reading that groove, pushing it through speakers, amplifying it, and creating you know, sound waves again is, is kind of a crazy process. The process starts with PVC pellets. Today, the pellets are white, and white records come out the other end. They can also make traditional black vinyl, or just about any color. The PVC pellets are melted in here and are first formed into something that looks nothing like a record. It looks like a hockey puck, no. and that's what's getting transferred in. Wait, that thing is going to become a record? Right, yeah. The hockey puck and the record label then move between two plates called stampers, where it is flattened and the grooves are pressed into it, kind of like a big waffle iron. So these are what are called stampers. So this is the negative of the music. So what, it, what happens is when you saw the press when it was coming to close, this, these were on there, and they're closing together, and where there's grooves, these are ridges. So that's what's pressing out the music. After the hockey puck is flattened, it is quickly cooled so it's not too floppy when it moves to the trimmer, where the excess vinyl is cut off, saved, and made into more records. It then moves on to a stack of finished discs. One record every 32 seconds, about 500 every day just from this one machine and they're hoping to add two more machines soon. One advantage of having a record plant in Chicago is that local musicians or their labels can pick up the finished records and even listen to them with the people who made them. This record is a collaboration between Chicago Symphony Orchestra cellist Katinka Klein and guitarist Bill McKay, both serious vinyl lovers. It's less cold maybe, you know, you just don't just press a button or something. There's like this, this process that you see. Like, you know, when you make music, you make sounds with physical things, with metal and wood, and, and so it's nice to kind of get the feel that sound is physical. And by some magic, when a record spins on a turntable and a needle rides in the groove, what comes out of the speakers is audio that many audiophiles say is better, warmer, and more real than any other way to listen to recorded music.